This is a very special place. Uh, we call this an ecological uh, jewel. It's very important that it maintains its natural state to heal itself and to progress how it moves and to be given that space to allow it to do that. A perennial wild river is an unlikely find in the desert southwest, and it's what makes the Gila River, New Mexico's last wild river, so special. Like a ribbon of life in an otherwise arid landscape, the Gila River offers lush vegetation and a cooler, more humid climate that supports a diverse network of plant and animal life. Fed by creeks in both the Gila and Aldo Leopold wilderness areas, the Gila River rises in western New Mexico and flows southwest into Arizona. Historically, the Gila coursed its way across the Arizona desert to Yuma, where it joined with the mighty Colorado. But these days, the stretch of the Gila below Phoenix is usually a dry wash. In contrast to the fate of the Gila in Arizona, here in New Mexico's Cliff Gila Valley, the river continues to run free. This is a very special place. Uh, we call this an ecological uh, jewel. First of all, it's just where we are in the world, uh, giving, this very, uh, giving us this very unique and diverse array of species. Uh, this valley, for instance, has one of the highest density of non-colonial breeding birds in North America. The southwestern willow flycatcher, which migrates from Central America, is one of the many birds dependent on the Gila River and the riparian habitat that it creates. Federally listed as an endangered species, the highest population of this bird anywhere is located along the Gila in the Cliff Gila Valley. The Gila River is the key to the long-term survival of this and many other species. The natural hydrology that's characteristic of the Gila uh, means that we still have lots of germination events for our native forest here. In fact, what we're looking at uh, in this 14-mile long broad alluvial floodplain of the Cliff Gila Valley is really the most intact cottonwood forest remaining anywhere in the American Southwest. The Gila is also home to one of the most intact native fish communities in existence in the lower Colorado drainage. One of these native fish, the loach minnow, evolved in the Gila River system but has now lost more than 90 percent of its range. The Gila River remains its most important habitat. In addition to the natural communities that have evolved along the river, prehistoric and historic cultures have called the Gila home. The Apache chief Geronimo was born in the headwaters of the Gila, and the river is still central to Apache culture today. Okay, my name is Joe Sines. I'm uh, of Chiricahua Apache descent, and I belong to the Warm Springs Apache Band, uh, which we pronounce Chihine, means the, the people of the red paint, red paint people. The Gila River, that river uh, originates from the center of our country. Uh, water is an important aspect of our culture. Uh, we understood it. Uh, as a young person, my mom taught me how to read water. Explorers, trappers, and surveyors passed through this area, but increasing waves of settlers in the post-Civil War era made a lasting mark on the landscape. Extensive grazing, mining, and logging soon began and continued to degrade the health of the watershed. In response to the abuse of this unique and precious resource, America's most influential conservationist, Aldo Leopold, first proposed protection of the Gila wilderness in 1921. This year we're marking the centennial of Aldo Leopold's arrival in the Southwest. He comes here in 1909, fresh out of forestry school, and then his real education begins. He reads the land and he becomes a different man in his attitudes toward the environment. The culmination of this transition is really the creation of the first wilderness area. In 1924, the Gila Wilderness designation gave landmark protection to over 588,000 acres, including the headwaters of the Gila, 40 years before the Wilderness Act was passed. Today the river is enjoyed for its recreational values such as birding and hiking, fishing and hunting, rafting, family gatherings, and quiet enjoyment. Since ancient times, people have used the Gila River, but more recently, people began trying to take more from the river than it can give. The Gila Conservation Coalition was formed in Silver City in 1984 in uh, direct response to proposals for the Hooker Dam and later the Connor Dam and later the Mangus Diversion on the Gila River. And uh, our purpose was to uh, keep the Gila as a free-flowing stream and we defeated uh, all three of these uh, water development proposals. The Gila Conservation Coalition is a partnership of three conservation groups, 
Gila Resources Information Project, Upper Gila Watershed Alliance, and the Center for Biological Diversity. The coalition continues Aldo Leopold's conservation ethic by working to protect the free flow of the Gila and the wilderness characteristics of the Gila and Aldo Leopold wilderness areas. In 2004, the Gila River came under threat yet again with the passage of the Arizona Water Settlements Act, which provides New Mexico with as much as $128 million in federal subsidies and the ability to develop up to 14,000 acre-feet per year of Gila River water. Water withdrawals of this magnitude would irreparably harm the Gila's unique ecology. Because of conflicts surrounding how to move forward with planning under the Arizona Water Settlements Act, Governor Richardson issued a policy statement in 2007 that prohibited planning for a dam on the Gila River. He also directed his staff to develop a planning process that includes consideration of non-diversion alternatives to meet the water demands of the region. He expressed his skepticism that a diversion project would make economic and or environmental sense and that appropriate studies must be completed to support a decision. As a result of Governor Richardson's policy statement, communities in southwestern New Mexico are now engaged in a multi-stakeholder planning process to determine how to best meet their water supply needs. A 2005 economic analysis showed that not only has a need for Gila River water not been identified, but the cost of extracting water from the Gila River could be more than $300 million, at least 16 times higher than the cost of municipal conservation or purchasing currently unused water rights and developing new wells. The solution to the region's future water security lies in cost-effective measures like municipal and agricultural conservation, watershed restoration, and sustainable use of groundwater supplies, affordable solutions that will also allow the Gila to run free. The river needs our help again. It's up to people like you and me to get involved and help protect the Gila. It is possible to meet southwestern New Mexico's future demand for water and keep our river running free. Development of the Gila River water is an outdated solution to an unproven need. Uh, major water developments of this kind are passe. It's time we uh, realize the values, the fish, wildlife, and recreation values of, of uh, uh, a free-flowing stream like the Gila and recognize it for the rare jewel that it, that it is. We are descendants of the people that originated here. It's very important that it maintains its natural state. What I'd like to see here over time is a community uh, that has the ability to regain what it's lost, not to give up humanity's uh, place uh, in this beautiful valley, uh, but to find uh, a balance with the natural world and also uh, to understand that the story of the natural world is our story too. I took my love down to the Gila Followed the trail of the cottonwood tree we walked along, we wandered barefoot to the shady bend by the rock sand beach. And I took my love down to the Gila, held it close beneath the desert sky. We told stories on the banks of the Gila, felt the river as it flowed on. 